everyone. Before we start up again, that's a tech joke, start up again. I'd like everybody to take a minute to thank the tech staff, the support staff, the volunteers who made you comfortable today and who are making everything here possible. So give them a little love. And you know what this 21st century event needs? It needs a Renaissance man, and that's who you're going to be seeing next. He's the cultural equivalent of cross-training, a global thinker, a doer on the environment. He's scored a film, he's produced another one, and he's both a devotee and an insightful critic of tech. So, DJ Spooky and the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music perform an excerpt from Quantopia. It's inspired by the internet because the internet has created a new kind of human right, the access to information. That's the focus of this composition and the full show of Quantopia touring over the next year. Wait for it. Here it comes. Yep. So it's an absolute pleasure to be here today. And um, I have to admit, it's a real honor to um, share the stage with so many amazing people from the history of the last uh, several decades of innovation and thinking about new forms of um, communication. So I'd like to call out um, the UCLA chorus. Everybody, come on out. And if we can give them a little love, everybody. Okay. And that's uh, James Bates, who's the conductor. James, you can give a little love. Thank you. All right, so what you're gonna hear coming up is meant to be a kind of an acoustic portrait of the entire internet, but you're hearing an excerpt. So what you're gonna be seeing, if I can call up one of the, the slides um, that we've had set up. Um, when I started this composition, um, it was commissioned uh, by Hewlett uh, Foundation, and with that you'll, you're gonna see a slide in a second. I ended up getting in touch with um, Dr. Kleinrock and asking him for some of the foundational issues that he was thinking about uh, with packet switching. And so he sent me some of the foundational equations um, that uh, essentially, there we go, um, that based basically in his mind around the early and mid 60s had thought about the way breaking messages up into small fragments that could be sent using network systems at that time. So um, I said, okay, how are, I'm gonna have a chorus sing this equation. And, he, and then we started working through it, working through it. And then I realized, wait a second, it's not gonna sound that cool. So let's, let's update this. Um, if we can go to the next slide. What you're going to see, this is the internet in 1969. Um, and again, October yeah, this day, uh, 1969, uh, basically 50 years ago, this was the internet as we know it, ARPANET. And what I wanted to do was think about the, applying a kind of data sonification process to the entire structure and get people to think about pattern recognition and what that means in the role of uh, kind of a data-driven society. So as an artist, um, I do hip hop, techno, dubstep, uh, lots of different styles. Regretfully run to the tyranny of what you call 4-4 beat, you know, so it's always that tempo. Um, but so what you're gonna be hearing tonight, or today, is a kind of an, an interpretation of one aspect of this, which is information as a human right. So I decided to go um, to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that um, Eleanor Roosevelt set up, and we took Article 17, uh, which is basically the first time in human history that information is declared as a human right. And of course, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the internet eerily kind of have a sense of a relationship of respect for openness and exchange. And that's how we make a better society. So earlier today, uh, we, there was an interesting tension uh, with Ashton Kutcher and um, some of the folks about privacy. And for me at least, what was fascinating was that we have to think about um, 2019 as, a, as an update of these kinds of issues. Um, the internet started here at UCLA, and the web, it's also the 30th anniversary this year of the web, the web started at CERN in Switzerland. Now, the common denominator with those two instances is they're both in an educational context, thus we're free and open. So if you think about it, the notion of a walled garden approach, you know, I'm sure we all remember, um, you know, sort of the dinosaurs on the, the roadside of evolution of internet here, of like uh, AOL, for example, <laughs> where they go for the closed garden version, and it actually creates a kind of a bottleneck. So today is a celebration, to me at least, of the open source culture that the internet's two founding people that I really think of, Kleinrock, and of course, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, the web and the internet, 
being reflections of this open exchange. Um, so today is dedicated to those two guys, and I just want to say it's a real pleasure and honor to be here. And um, last but not least, the environmental aspect of this. Uh, when I flew in uh, yesterday, you could see the smoke billowing from in the distance. And it was a powerful statement about hyper-consumerism and all the issues that, um, again, a municipal electrical, electrical grid is still on, where some of the private ones up in the north, PG&E, for example, are turned off. So you can easily kind of think about that sub subtle tension between public domain, open source, and free culture versus some of these more closed and, um, for lack of a better word, sort of locked down systems. So um, you guys ready? Everybody ready? All right. Um, so from 1969 on up to 2019, you're going to be seeing an evolution of some of the mathematics. And that data visualization was done with a data scientist named Roger Antonsen. So I just want to make sure to give him a little bit of a shout out as well. OK, so everybody ready? Here we go.
So I guess that's what we now call a mashup. Thank you guys so much, really appreciate it. Um, so what you were hearing was a chorus singing the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as a respectful sort of homage to how the open source culture, I think at least, inspired a lot of the early origins of the internet as we know it. So thank you guys so much. My name is DJ Spooky, little New York flavor today. So thank you. All right.